In this video, we're going to explore the Models Palette in 3D Code Sculpt workspace. The way it works is it allows you to drag and drop layers from within 3D Code's Vox Tree layer panel into the Models Palette, to which 3D Code will then create a thumbnail for you so that you can click on it to retrieve it at any future point. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it works. I want to select this layer that contains this character's body. And I'm going to go to the Models Palette at the very top. I can create a new folder. Or I can select one that I may have created previously. In this case, I've already created one. I'm going to click at the top here and find the one I want to utilize. And I can see some that have already been stored here. If I drag and drop this, it's going to store an OBJ file on my hard drive and this thumbnail will be my link to retrieve it back into the scene. I'm going to go ahead and name this layer Zeg New. And I'm going to drag and drop it as I hover over the right side of the layer. I'll click and drag into the palette anywhere. The greater the density of your model, the longer it's going to take to go through the decimation process. As you can see, we have a decimation dialog that allows us to proceed to decimate the model in order to produce its overall poly count if we want. If you do not want any decimation, if you want to leave it as it is, you can adjust the reduction percentage to zero. You'll now notice here the reduced poly count is exactly the same as the current poly count. By default, this value will be 50. But again, you could use a slider to adjust it however you like. So I'll hit OK. OK. If you want your object front facing in a thumbnail, and most often times you will, you want to have your object looking down the Z axis. And that's because the camera that actually takes the snapshot will be located something like this. It's looking at the positive side of the z-axis. So that's worth noting anytime you start a new project if you want to have all your models already facing the camera so you get a better representation of your model. Some of these others are facing the back side of the model and that doesn't give me a lot of information about the state of this particular mesh. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at how you might store a part of your model. For example, you could split the model into different sections using the split tool. You'll find that in the object section of the tool panel, split. What this will do is as you make the selection, 3D Coat is going to do as the name implies, it's going to split it and move it to its own new layer, which 3D Coat will create for you. However, there is another option, and that is clone. So clone will not split the model, it's just going to do as the name implies, it's just going to clone that particular portion. Let's take a look at how that works. The polygonal lasso will suit my purposes just fine. Now, what it's done is it's created a preview object, if you will, almost like importing the model, which you can see the import tool is now active. So what this does is it allows you to make modifications to it before you actually commit it to a layer. So I'm going to select a new layer. And I'm going to switch to surface mode and I will hit Apply. 3D Coat's asking if I want to remember the initial scale of the object. In this case, no, I'm not really all that concerned about it. I'll step out of that tool by selecting something else, and now I can see the result. Let's go ahead now and name our layer left hand. I'll now drag and drop this, and you'll notice that 3D Coat adopts the name of the layer when I do this. Okay. There we go. So these are our last two objects. 
I did likewise earlier with the head. And let me hide that. I want to create one new layer. Again, I'll switch to surface mode. And I'm going to click on the body that we just created earlier. Okay, so here's our object. If I were to unhide this original one, you can see it's in the very same location, same scale, and same orientation. To hide the preview object, I can step out, but I have not yet committed it just yet. So let's go ahead and hit the Enter key or the Apply button. Now let's choose another tool. So we have our new copy here. The last thing I should mention is the ability to bring in OBJ files from outside of 3D Coat that you may have stored on your hard drive. And 3D Coat will create a thumbnail for you during that process. You can also copy and paste OBJ files you may have stored elsewhere on your hard drive into the following directory in order to place those OBJ files into your model's palette. Now you may want to store it inside of a project directory as a subfolder. Then when you come back to 3D Coat and look up that folder, you'll see 3D Coat has already created thumbnails for you. So you don't have to go through this step one by one. All right, and that's going to conclude this look at using the models palette in 3D Code Sculpt workspace. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.